As discussed in the nose wheel section, the carriage can have main landing gear brakes on both main landing gear wheels that can be drum or disc and controlled by mechanical or hydraulic actuation. Each manufacturer has different designs and options. Tires can also assist as shock absorbers for landings. Large Tundra tires add significant shock absorbing capability and are used for operations on soft files, rough files, and sand. Figure 3, 38. Generally, the faster WSC aircraft used for airport operations have narrower tires to eliminate drag. Landing gear for water and snow Besides landing gear for land, there are landing gear systems for water, weight shift control C, and snow, ski equipped. If ski equipped, skis are added to the bottom of the wheels or replace the wheels. If C equipped, a complete system provides aircraft flotation and steering using rudders similar to a boat. The water rudders are foot-controlled, similar to WSEL steering on the ground. Two types of C-equipped systems are the flying boat and pontoon. The flying boat is a solid or inflatable boat that the WSC aircraft fits into, and its fuselage is secured to as well. Figure 3, 39. This is generally used for rougher seas in the ocean and, with the extra drag of the boat itself, this typically uses a larger wing and is therefore a slower flying WSC aircraft. The boat design is known to be more stable in rough seas and assists in keeping less water from splashing up so pilot and passenger stay drier. The pontoon system is used for calmer water, has less drag while flying, and therefore can accommodate faster, smaller wings. Figure 3, 40. Both the flying boat and the pontoon system need more horsepower than land operations for two reasons. First, to provide enough thrust to accelerate to take off speed with the extra drag of the boat or pontoons on the water, and second, to provide enough extra thrust to overcome the additional drag of the boat or pontoons in the air for flight. End of page 3 to 14. Electrical Systems WSC aircraft are typically equipped with a 12-volt direct current DC. Electrical System A basic WSC aircraft electrical system consists of a magneto-slash-generator, voltage regulator, battery, master-slash-battery switch, and associated electrical wiring. Electrical energy stored in a battery provides a source of electrical power for starting the engine and other electrical loads for the WSC aircraft. The electrical system is typically turned on or off with a master switch. Turning the master switch to the on position provides electrical energy from the battery to all the electrical equipment circuits with the exception of the ignition system. Equipment that commonly uses the electrical system energy includes 1. Position lights 2. Anti-collision lights 3. Instrument lights 4. Radio equipment 5. Navigation equipment 6. Electronic instrumentation 7. Electric fuel pump 8. Starting motor 9. Electric heating systems, gloves, socks, pants, vests, jackets, etc. Fuses or circuit breakers are used in the electrical system to protect the circuits and equipment from electrical overload. Spare fuses of the proper amperage should be carried in the WSC aircraft to replace defective or blown fuses. Circuit breakers have the same function as a fuse but can be manually reset, rather than replaced, if an overload condition occurs in the electrical system. Placards at the fuse or circuit breaker panel identify the circuit by name and show the amperage limit. An ammeter may be used to monitor the performance of the electrical system. The ammeter shows if the magneto-slash-generator is producing an adequate supply of electrical power. It also indicates whether or not the battery is receiving an electrical charge. A voltage meter also provides electrical information about battery voltage and additional status of the electrical system. Ballistic Parachute an additional safety system available is a ballistic parachute system. In the case of a structural failure because of a mid-air collision or an engine out over hostile terrain such as a forest, the ballistic parachute provides an added safety system. The parachute is sized so that when used, the complete aircraft comes down under canopy. Details of ballistic parachute system use are covered in more detail in Chapter 13, Abnormal and Emergency Operations. When the system is activated, a rocket shoots out, pulling the parachute system to full line stretch and forcing the parachute out and away from the carriage and wing. The preferred point of attachment for the parachute is on top of the wing at the hang point. 
This allows the WSC aircraft to descend level and land on the wheels, helping to absorb the shock. This requires routing from the chute to the top of the wing with O-rings to be able to remove this routing to easily take the wing off the carriage. Alternate attach points where there is no routing to the top of the wing are the mast and engine attachment points, however, this has the WSC aircraft descending nose down when activated. The ballistic parachute canister can be mounted in a number of locations on the WSC, typically on the carriage pointed sideways to avoid entanglement with the propeller. The actuation handle is mounted in the flight deck for pilot use when needed. Figures 3, 41 and 3 to 42. End of page 3 to 15. Flight deck. The flight deck is where the pilot and passenger sit. It is typically a tandem seating with the pilot in front and the passenger in back. When the WSC aircraft is used for instruction, the instructor typically sits in back and must have access to the flight controls. The pilot in the front has ground and flight controls. The right foot controls the foot throttle and the left foot controls the brake. This is similar to throttle and brake controls on an automobile. The feet also control ground steering by moving the front fork with the foot pedals. A foot throttle and foot brake can be added to optional ground steering control for use by an instructor sitting in back. A hand cruise throttle is typically used when the pilot can set it and it stays set. This cruise throttle is usually in a position where the instructor in the back seat can also operate it. Figures 3, 43. The wing flight control bar is in a position at chest height for the pilot in the front seat. Additional extensions are added for a passenger or instructor to use if seated in the back seat. Figure 3, 7. Ignition switches are sometimes included in the cruise control throttle housing or as a separate set of switches. If a WSC is used for instruction, the ignition switches should be within reach of the instructor sitting in the back seat. Figures 3, 43. The ballistic parachute handle must be accessible for use when needed but not put in a position where it could be accidentally deployed. Some WSC aircraft have two handles, one for the front and one for the back. Additional controls for starting, such as the choke or enricher, must be accessible to the pilot. Dashboards and instrument panels The instrument panel is in front of the pilot and provides engine, flight, navigation, and communications information. The pilot is responsible for maintaining collision avoidance with a proper and continuous visual scan around the aircraft, as well as monitoring the information available from the instrument panel. The pilot must process the outside cues along with the instrumentation throughout the flight for a sound decision-making process. The ignition switches, which may be located on the instrument panel or within the instructor's reach for WSC used for instruction, has two positions, on, which allows power to make contact with the spark plugs, or off, which is a closed switch to ground and removes the power source from the spark plugs. Typically, WSC engines have two spark plugs per cylinder, two switches, and two completely separate ignition systems. Some single-place WSCs with smaller engines have only one spark plug per cylinder, one ignition switch, and a single ignition system. End of page 3 to 16. For example, for a two-stroke liquid-cooled engine, the manufacturer may require instrumentation to monitor engine exhaust gas temperatures, EGT, water temperatures, and revolutions per minute, RPM. Additionally, for a four-stroke engine, the manufacturer may additionally require oil temperature and pressure gauges. For a simple two-stroke air-cooled engine, the manufacturer's requirement may be EGT, cylinder head temperature, CHT, and RPM instrumentation. Generally, most electrical or engine controls are located on the dashboard unless required to be reached by the instructor for flight instruction. Dashboards are as varied as the manufacturers and the purpose of the aircraft, from simple to complex. Classical analog gauges are common, but digital instruments are becoming more popular with light sport aircraft, LSA. Overall, no instrumentation is required for ELSA, but for SLSA an airspeed indicator is usually required, and engine manufacturers require certain instruments be installed on the aircraft to monitor the performance of the particular engine. Flight Instruments the specific theory of operation and details of instruments is covered in the pilot's handbook of aeronautical knowledge and is a prerequisite to this section on flight instruments. 
The altimeter is the most important flight instrument and should be on every WSC aircraft. It is used to maintain the proper altitude at airports, during crews, and provides other aircraft position information for the safety of all. The Vertical Speed Indicator VSI, is one tool to assist the pilot with the performance of the aircraft. The Airspeed Indicator ASI, is used to optimize performance of the aircraft, compare predicted to actual performance, and to operate within the limitations of the aircraft. Navigation Instruments A Global Positioning System GPS, is typically used as a navigation and flight aid for most WSC aircraft. A magnetic compass is commonly used as a primary navigation system or as a backup when a GPS system is used. Engine Instruments there is a variety of engine instruments that are used. The most basic is the engine RPM, which determines the power of the engine. Specific engine instruments are discussed in the power plant section. Instrument panel arrangements. Instrument panels vary greatly from the basic to the complex. Figure 3, 44 depicts a standard instrument panel supplied by the manufacturer with a portable GPS added in the middle. Electrical components are neatly arranged along the top. Large analog airspeed, left, and altitude, right, flight instruments are installed in the middle with the portable GPS installed between the two. The bottom stack consists of the basic engine instruments for a simple two-stroke air-cooled engine, RPM for power, top, CHT, middle, and EGT, bottom. A more advanced analog panel with a user radio and GPS added is shown in Figure 3, 45. Airspeed, vertical speed indicator, and altitude large flight instruments are along the top. End of page 3 to 17. A navigational euro is in the middle of the panel. The bottom row consists of four-stroke engine instruments, electrical and remote fuel gauge. The user-installed radio and GPS complete a well-equipped instrument panel. A hybrid panel of analog, digital, and portable instruments is shown in Figure 3, 46. The integrated digital panel does provide more options in a smaller space. One panel can now have aircraft performance screens, engine system screens, navigation screens, communication screens, attitude indicator, and any combination of these. Figure 3, 47. End of page 3 to 18. Communications. There are three types of communication systems used in WSC aircraft. One, communications between the pilot and passenger while inside the aircraft. Two, aircraft radio communications with other aircraft and control towers. Three, radar position indicator communications from the WSC aircraft to control towers, transponder. Easy and clear communications between the pilot and passenger, or between the instructor and student inside the flight deck is important for the safety and enjoyment of both. Modern communication systems have advanced noise cancelling systems in headphones and microphones to reduce engine noise and blast of air. Each system is unique and the quality of the sound and noise cancelling capability of the system varies. Some use voice-activated systems in which headphones activate only when someone is speaking into the microphone, others have a steady state in which there is no additional control of the voice activation. Since there is a large difference in systems available, it is best to test systems to determine what is best for the WSC aircraft being flown. Figure 3, 48 an aircraft radio is required for flying in any tower-controlled airspace. Using a radio is not required at airports without a control tower but it is recommended for the safety of self, passengers, pilots in the air, and people-slash-property on the ground. To broadcast to a tower or other aircraft, press a push to talk PTT. Button. A complete flight deck radio and accessory system schematic is shown in Figure 3, 49. A radar signal receiver slash transmitter system is required at busy commercial airports, classes C and B, and at altitudes above 10,000 feet mean sea level, MSL, unless the aircraft was certified without an electrical system to power the unit. This is known as a mode C transponder that sends a signal giving the control tower an exact location and altitude of aircraft. 
Figure 3, 47 Power Plant System The power plant system is composed of the fuel system, engine, gearbox, and propeller. Here we will point out the basic components of these systems with their function and details covered in Chapter 4, Power Plant System. End of page 3 to 19 Fuel System Components the WSC aircraft is equipped with fuel tanks usually ranging in capacity from 5 to 20 gallons. As with any aircraft, knowing how much fuel the tank holds is crucial to flight operations. The LSA definition has no limitations on the size of the fuel tank, unlike its ultralight vehicle predecessor. Generally, the fuel tank is located close to the CG, so fuel burn does not affect the balance of the carriage. Some fuel tanks are clear for visual inspection of the amount of fuel on board, Figure 3, 50. While others have tanks that are not visible and require fuel level probes for instrument panel indication of fuel. Figure 3, 51. Fuel lines exit the fuel tank and may incorporate a primer bulb, fuel filters, fuel pump, and or a primer system, all of which must be integrated into the carriage. A fuel venting system is also required, which can be a hole in the fuel filler or lines running to vent at an appropriate location. A fuel shutoff valve may be installed and can be located anywhere in the fuel line. Some designs have a fuel tank sump drain valve to remove water and solid contaminants. Engine and Gearbox The typical WSC aircraft engine can be two or four stroke, liquid or air-cooled, and normally ranges from 50 to 100 horsepower. Some engines have electric starters and some have pull starters. Most WSC aircraft engines have reduction drives that, when attached, reduce the propeller RPM from one half to one quarter the engine RPM. Figure 3, 52. A significant amount of the total aircraft empty weight is determined by the power plant, engine, gearbox, and propeller, and mounting configuration. When trailering the WSC aircraft over bumpy terrain or over long trips, the bouncing of the carriage and the trailer can put extreme stress on this mounting system. In addition, repeated hard landings of the carriage can also stress the welds of the engine mount. Consistent detailed inspections of the engine mount should be an important part of every pre-flight and post-flight inspection. The power plant systems are as varied as the WSC aircraft they power. Modern technology has allowed these systems to become lighter, quieter, more efficient, and, most importantly, dependable. The Propeller Propellers are power converters that change the engine horsepower into thrust. Thrust is the force that propels the aircraft through the air by pushing the WSC aircraft forward. Aerodynamically speaking, a propeller is a rotating airfoil and the same principles that apply to the wing applies to the propeller, except the propeller provides a horizontal force of thrust. End of page 3 to 20 Propellers typically consist of two, three, or four blades. Figures 3, 53 and 3 to 54. Propellers can be ground adjustable or fixed pitch. Variable pitch flight propellers are not allowed on LSA. The pitch should be properly set for your WSC aircraft to provide the recommended RPM of the engine at full power. The POH should be consulted if there is any question about the propeller RPM and adjusting or replacing the propeller. Propellers are specifically matched to the engine power, gear reduction, and speed range of the aircraft. Therefore, not just any propeller may be put on any engine. The POH requires specific propellers that are matched for each aircraft. As with an airplane propeller, the WSC aircraft propeller turns at such high speeds that it becomes invisible when in motion. The dangers of a turning propeller require every pilot to maintain the highest level of safety and respect for the consequences of body parts, pets, and debris coming in contact with a rotating propeller. Debris on the takeoff slash landing field is a danger to the propeller, as well as to the people who may be in the prop wash area behind or on the side of the propeller. Stones, small pieces of metal, and sticks can become dangerous projectiles if kicked into the propeller during startup, taxi, takeoff, and landing. Just as with any airframe or wing component of a WSC aircraft, if the propeller becomes damaged, nicked, or dinged, the aircraft's performance can be greatly affected. Some pilots elect to use tape or rock deflector guards to protect the leading edge from rock slash debris damage. Regardless, taking proper care of the propeller is as critical as proper engine and wing care. 
End of page 3 to 21. Chapter Summary Components and systems consist of two primary subassemblies, wing and carriage. The main wing component is the frame, which is composed of the leading edges, keel, crossbar, and control frame. The typical wing frame has lower wires and upper wires with a king post. The strutted version has wing struts and no upper rigging. The frame is designed so the outboard leading edges flex, and it also has a control system that allows the keel to move side to side relative to the leading edges for roll control. The sail is designed specifically for the frame with battens and leading edge stiffener provide the rigid airfoil shape of the sail. The carriage is separate from the wing. Different wings can be put on the same carriage at separate times for different types of flying, example, large wing is used for flying low and slow where a small wing can be used for flying fast and long cross-country missions. As discussed in Chapter 2, Aerodynamics, each wing must be approved by the manufacturer to go on a specific carriage. Main carriage components are the mast, carriage keel, front tube, and engine mount. This structure houses the flight deck, power plant, and landing gear. The carriage structure also houses system components such as the electrical system, ballistic parachute, and fuel tank. The flight deck is the heart of the carriage providing pilot systems for communications, navigation, engine-slash-flight-slash-navigation instruments, and electrical controls. End of page 3 to 22. End of chapter 3. Please like, share, and subscribe to our channel thank you. Chapter 4 is coming soon.